Whenever I share the books I'm reading, you guys always plague me with the best book recommendations. So I figured what would happen if I spent a video reading those recommendations? I should say there is no rhyme or reason to the books that I ended up reading versus the ones that have been recommended that I didn't end up reading. I literally just scrolled through comments and ordered the books that sounded good. Except Mama Bear Apologetics. No book has been recommended to me more. You guys always ask my opinion on this book, so that is coming. But first, let's roll the intro. What am I even doing? The first book that was recommended to me that I chose to read was King's Cross by Tim Keller. I love me some Tim and at the point of filming, he had just passed and so I thought like no better time to read this than when we're reflecting on the work that Tim Keller did for the church. Hey friends, so I am just over 50 pages into The King's Cross and I'm not gonna lie, like, okay, so it's 58 pages and I feel like I'm finally hitting my stride with this book. I have read a lot of Tim Keller and really usually enjoy Tim Keller, but the first 50 pages, I felt like maybe it was me, maybe it was the book, but I just felt like it was all over the place. And I was really only reading like a chapter at a time or um, maybe even like half a chapter at some points and not really hitting the stride, not really getting where we were going. And I think I finally kind of, I'm into it. I'm finally get where he's going with this. And he's just made so many good points. So as you can see, I love dog gearing whenever there's any kind of information that would be helpful to write in my Bible and have right there in my Bible to better understand it. And so I've done a lot of dog gearing and I just finished the fifth chapter and it was kind of just like, so I'm really excited to kind of get into the groove of this book. I started it like almost a week ago, I think. Yeah, so actually exactly a week ago, I started this book and I have just not been able to get into the stride of it or really kind of see the direction that he's going. And so now that I kind of see where he's headed and understand, I'm really excited to finish it and it probably won't be long for me to finish the rest of it. The whole thing is like what? A little over 200 pages, 230-ish. So I'm excited to read the next 170 pages, but that's kind of the update. Um, It's basically walking through Mark and talking about the character or like identity of Christ. It's almost like a readable commentary. Christian living meets a commentary on Mark is kind of what this is, which I didn't know that going in. Again, y'all know I'm just reading y'all's recommendations. And so it was just another Tim Keller book that I wanted to read. But to go through Mark in this way, I'm loving it. I ended up finishing the rest of King's Cross on a flight on my way to do an interview for season two of the How to Faith a Life podcast. So if you didn't know, I just relaunched it. Two episodes are already out with a new one each Monday through this fall, interviewing some of my favorite authors, discussing a lot of theology, and hopefully, by the Lord's grace, growing every episode along the way. Check it out here, Spotify, Apple Music, all the places. I don't think I even knew that this book existed. He's got so many and I've read some of the more popular ones, but somehow haven't touched this one. I gotta tell you guys, it was a five-star read by far. Can y'all see my dog ears? So I took a lot of dog ears. This um, binder clip marks the point where I stopped transferring the notes from this book on the texts and passages in Mark into my Bible. So I need to pick back up here and finish off with all these notes and dog ears, adding these notes into my Bible. But here's a couple clips of like how, cause I get this question all the time. This is how I take what the book has said and add it into my Bible. Go night night. No, go night night. It's basically just treating the book like a commentary. And whenever it says anything important about the passage of scripture that it's writing about, I will add that in my Bible notes, like Tim Keller thought this about this, or Tim Keller mentioned that this connects to this. And I basically just do this whenever it's something that I wanna remember for the future, and the next time I'm reading this passage. But I should note that some Christian living books have a lot more of like biblical references and commentary and valuable insights to the passages of scripture than others. And more often than not, the dog ears that I make 
are directly tied to how much I enjoyed the book because I do want to read Christian living books that have a bunch of applications to scripture. That's just how I am. I don't really want to sit down and read a Christian living book if it's not referencing a lot of scripture, but that's just how I am. I don't know. And while on that trip and getting some sun, per Brenda Browning's brilliant recommendation, I started Alyssa Childers' Another Gospel. As a content creator, I don't typically watch a whole lot of other people in my niche because I don't want to become an imitator and I want to make what I genuinely feel called to make in content. And so I really just enjoyed getting to know Alyssa Childers more because I don't watch many of her videos and was really surprised by how much I could relate to the ways that she thought about things. Hey friends, it has been a while. <laughs> Here we come closer. Y'all are too far away. It has been something like two weeks since I have read the book. And it's not that the book isn't interesting. It's not that I don't remember exactly what she was talking about when we left off. I'm still right there emotionally, mentally with the book. I know in the past, like I've taken long periods off of reading a book and I've like completely forgotten. And that just kind of reflects the depth or how much it impacted me. Like that's not true. This book has been so good so far. I'm, I don't know, more than a third, but less than half done. Can y'all see where my bookmark is? almost a half through this book and it's so good. I just got sick after the last clip that you saw, or maybe the last clip you saw was me reading when I was sick. I read for like one day for like an hour maybe and then fell asleep. I got sick after traveling and then as soon as I got better, the Galatians challenge started up and school started up and I'm finally now kind of catching my breath after, you know, you fall behind with traveling and things like that. So I'm excited to get back into this book and finish this book because I know for sure I have a couple more books from this challenge of reading y'all's recommendations that I wanted to read. And then I also just got an Amazon order in of a new book that I'm so excited to tear apart. Um, it's super thick and um, I'm very excited about that, but it will be in another video. So keep your eyes out, more reading vlogs are coming. But in the meantime, I'm like dead set on like, I need to finish this as soon as possible because I feel like guilty. I feel like, Alyssa, I didn't do you well because I read it so far apart, you know? I am very like on or off. I'm either reading every day for at least an hour or two or three, or I'm not reading at all. And it's frustrating. Like I wanna get better at just, you know, even if I just read for three minutes, like reading for the day, a little bit every single day. And so let's get back into reading right here, right now. And let's try and finish this book today. I wonder if we could. <laughs> finished the book. I had doubts when I said, let's finish the book today, but we read like, what is that? 150 pages today. Good work. Fist pump. This was another great five-star read. I have a much higher appreciation for Alyssa Childers now that I've read this book and kind of get to see like what has made her who she is, I guess, as well as this just being a great resource. It's very approachable for like the average Christian on refuting progressive Christianity. So if you're someone that's really struggled with the convincing lies of progressive Christianity, I would highly, highly, highly recommend this book. It's probably the best resource I know of that's like accessible and like good for basically any Christian. If you're a baby Christian, you'll learn a lot. If you're a well-experienced Christian, if you're an educated Christian, it was like review for me on a lot of things. Still learn little things here and there. Overall, just like a great read because again, I probably all in, it probably took me like four hours to read. So really not super long and drawn out. She threw in quotes and references where she needed to. There's a bunch of notes in the end of additional resources, but she didn't overwrite, I guess. The only thing that I would say is the chapter when she was writing about, I think it was the cosmic child abuse chapter, she was writing about substitutionary atonement. And I wished instead of first addressing progressives views on it, she would have first defined an orthodox historical Christian view of what substitutionary atonement, penal substitutionary atonement is, what Christians truly biblically believe about the cross first, and then refuted um, progressives arguments. Just because I kept thinking, you know, if a new Christian was reading this, they might be really confused. Like, what are the two different distinctions here? What am I missing? You know, that, that was really the only thing. And I, I dog-eared two pages. Y'all know whenever there is like exposition, 
really helpful information on a specific passage of scripture, I'll write it in my Bible. There's nothing like that out of this book, but this is definitely something that I will be recommending for years to come to any Christian struggling with progressive Christianity, but it is 9.50, so I'm going to wrap up for the evening and try in turn my brain off. Next up, I had to read Mama Bear Apologetics. It's the most requested book on my channel, but I also saw maybe possibly why I hadn't read it yet. Hi friends. I am about halfway through. It doesn't look like it, but I think it's because there's like a lot of notes at the end. It's taking me so long, guys. This, this whole reading vlog is taking me way too long and it's just inevitable whenever you're reading books that other people recommend to you. And I'm not like super vibing with the apologetics because I recently read and I never reviewed it in a video. Um, I read expository apologetics and that like cleansed my palate. I was like, great. I was satisfied. And then y'all had me read Aly Alyssa Childers, um, another gospel. And now this, and I'm just like, okay, <laughs> I really loved Vody Bauckham's writing. Highly recommend. Like I've thought about it so often. This was like a five-star read for me because I read this and really enjoyed it. And I've been putting off for years reading Mama Bear Apologetics because everybody talked about it and spoke so highly of it. I'm just the type of person that's like, if everybody likes it, it can't be that good. Is that terrible? I'm a broken sinner. Also, I'm a little paranoid because I've got a candle back here and it's next to some of my most prized possessions, my commentaries. Anyway, okay, anyway, I saw it in the background. It stressed me out. So uh, what was I saying? Reading this has was already something that I wasn't necessarily looking forward to, but I knew I needed to, to be a good Christian mom in the 2020s was read this. And I'm glad I'm getting it over with, but I just don't vibe with like the mainstream mamas. I like to read men. Most of what I've read has been from Ferrer. Is that how you say it? Hillary Morgan Ferrer. It's just like addressing issues and then like basically giving moms a quick solution on how to address those issues, but not like truly addressing the issues. And she acknowledges it, that she's like just flying by some of these issues, but I would love to just go a step deeper. <sighs> I'm struggling through this book. This could be so good and that's the problem. It's like, I don't wanna review this badly. It's just not the book for me, I don't think. And I'm so tempted to DNF it, which means did not finish. I just enjoy the men better. I mean, they'll sit here and they'll be talking about stuff and then they'll be like, you know, us moms, and we, and we have that laundry pile sitting in the living room right now. And I'm like, why did you do that? I don't wanna remember my laundry pile sitting in the living room right now. I don't wanna even talk about the fact that I'm a mom because I'm so much more than just a mom. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ and that is my identity. So I think just by nature, branding a book of like, this is apologetics for moms doesn't resonate with me, but it probably so could resonate with other people. I have been raised and taught in circles of academia and so it just doesn't resonate with me in that way and it becomes rather like belittling. I wanna just talk about these topics. I don't wanna be belittled as like a mom that's trying to talk about these topics, you know? And so I think that's why I'm struggling with it. But it could be so good for somebody that does identify as like, I'm just a mom, I don't know where to start in apologetics. This would be your book. It's just, I'm struggling through it. And I think that's why I avoided it for so long because it's just like, I don't know. Yeah, what I already said. So I am really tempted to DNF it especially because I, but then will I regret? I don't know if I would even regret DNFing it. Okay, I'm making the decision now. I'm not gonna finish this book. Doesn't mean it's not a good book. It's just not the book for me, okay? So I'm not gonna finish Mama Bear Apologetics. I'll just fold over the page. They always say, read about 100 pages before you quit. I did it and for the last like week of reading this, I've been low, not miserable, but just not enjoying myself. So I'm not gonna finish this, I but I will keep this book. It will be on my bookshelves until my kids, you know, do a, what's it called? A state sale. So it will be here if I do want a quick resource. As a quick refresher, it's here. But I'm so excited because, let's see, who recommended this? It was like in a recent video, which again, maybe that's the plus side of this video taking me so long. Amy Overton, I recognize your name, you might be a patron. Have you read Inexpressible by Michael Card? Instantly ordered the book. It's thin, kind of needs something easy and thin to read after 
being discouraged <laughs> for the last couple books. It's just, again, it's hard not reading what I feel like reading, but instead of reading like what somebody else recommends to me, that's just me being a sinful human being. It's fine. It's part of like literally what this video is about is reading what people recommend to me. I wanted to push myself to do it. It's just weighing on me. That's all. Also, I've ordered some really good books. Do you guys want to see them? Okay, I'm going to show you the books that I've ordered that I'm excited to read and then I'll tell you about this book. I was looking into interviewing, I think I reached out to him, I don't know if I've heard back yet, but William J. Webb for my podcast and I realized that he recently, not, I don't know, when, when did he come out? 2019, so you know, in the last five years. Bloody Brutal and Barbaric and I, if you guys don't recognize that name, I really enjoyed his book slaves women and homosexuals which was basically discussing his redemptive hermeneutic like why we say slavery is bad today but slavery was acknowledged in the bible and why he doesn't endorse the lgbtqia plus lifestyle but does endorse women's ordination i really enjoyed his wrestlings it was one of those reads that like i wasn't too comfortable in but i wasn't too challenged by i loved it um and i've talked about it and been obsessed with it ever since i read it so i'm excited to read this this deals with all the violence many skeptics and atheists critique the Bible about. And I'm really excited to read all his thoughts on this and his reconciling because most, if I'm being honest with you guys, like this is something I don't know if my education faithfully dealt with. Like in undergrad and in seminary even, it's just one of those things like, yeah, that's part of God's judgment against sin in the nations, but that's about it. And it's not really truly mourning dealing with the issue of the violence. He says, basically, it raises hard questions about biblical ethics and the character of God. Have we missed something in our traditional readings? Super excited about this. Kind of been like, you know, whenever your brain goes to thinking about a book that you're excited about reading, it's been this one. And then I also, I'm gonna put this in my red list. I'm also really, really, really super excited about this one that apparently everybody's been talking about. A friend from my church mentioned it to me and I've already referenced it for a couple different things like projects that I'm working on, studies and everything. And it is a biblical theology by Kostenberger, who is somebody that I've used in research and papers and Bible studies and things like that. And it's a canonical, thematic and ethical approach to the Bible as a whole. Now this is mainly for students and like technically a resource text. I would love to read it straight through because I think that's the best handling of the text as a whole. So this is probably something that like now those classes that I took in undergrad and seminary are probably using this as a textbook or will and I just want to read it myself. So super excited about this, intimidated in a good way, but excited about it. So I also have like a huge TBR including, I'll show y'all one more, The Great Dechurching. Ooh, it's a hardback. Should I take the cover off yet? Okay, no, I'll, I'll leave it on. <laughs> Y'all know me. It's called The Great Dechurching by Davis and Graham. And this was just something that the Gospel Coalition was talking about promoting and it sounded really good. So I ordered it. That's like literally it. It just came out. Yeah, it just came out, I think last month, if not a few weeks ago. So I had it pre-ordered and it came and I'm excited to read it because it's about who's leaving, why are they going and what will take to bring them back to the church. And that's something I see as a pastor's wife and as somebody that does this online, like I know a lot of people watch me to kind of like replace church and there's like uneasiness with that because obviously I'm not church, but also I do wanna to minister to those that are shut-ins or can't currently go to church for health reasons and stuff like that. So anyway, just to minister better, I wanted to read this and then probably will force my husband to read it as well. So anyway, I have a great TBR list and I'm so excited to get to those. I'm also working on my next course Course. And that is a lot of reading whenever I build out my courses. It's like reading every commentary I own from front to back on that book of the Bible. So I'm just like so ready to move on with my reading. But let's read Inexpressible Hesed and the Mystery of God's Loving Kindness. So this is basically a book about Hesed. Michael Card is award winning musician and performing artist. He earned a master's degree in biblical studies from Western Kentucky University. Yeah, so I had never even like, I don't think I've heard of his name. I always look at like where they went to school to see if they're from like my circles or my people know their people, like the people I read. Um, and then I look at the endorsements. And again, the people that endorsed him, I don't really know. So intrigued. 
very, very intrigued and I'm ready to start it. That will be fun. Y'all know I love Hesed. Hesed is the Hebrew word for God's loving kindness to use throughout the Old Testament. Right now I'm doing in-depth studies through the Psalms with my patrons every single week. And like the number of times that Hesed is used as like a critical point in that Psalm to bring them back to trusting in the Lord or surrender to the Lord or greater reliance on the Lord is just like incredible. And it's so convicting every single time it's used, the way that it's used in the Psalms, my commentaries like scream at me. They're like, this is Hasid, get excited. Let's see, let's see if this one's good. It's so short. I feel like I can knock it out quickly. just about halfway through, or actually no, probably more like 75% through with Inexpressible by Michael Card. I gotta admit, this is a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it would be a lot more like feel good. <laughs> Um, I mean, all I know about him is what the back of the book says. He did get a master's degree in biblical studies from Western Kentucky University, but I don't know who teaches there. I don't know anything about Western Kentucky University. So I figured it wouldn't be that good. I, that's so like rude of me, but that's the honest truth. And it's been really good. Now it's not like five stars in the fact of like, I can endorse everything he says, but I've dog-eared a lot. He's very passionate. It's a really easy read. The chapters are genuinely like, two and a half pages each. It's so quick. So for a while there, I was reading like a chapter a day. Y'all saw me in like the doctor's office and what else, Chick-fil-A and things like that. Just taking it around with me, reading it a little bit at a time because the chapters are just so short, it's easy to break it up. He does a great job with cross references to other portions of scripture and making the connection of Hesed throughout the whole Bible. But I will say there are times where he oversimplifies things or in order to make his point, he goes too far. So like on page 40, he says that basically Abraham was preparing to sacrifice Isaac thinking, well, God's just going to request of me the same thing all the other lowercase g gods request in their worship, human sacrifice. And I think that's going too far. I feel like if that was true in Abraham's heart and mind, he wouldn't have said God is going to provide a sacrifice. If that was true, we would probably see that in the text more of like Abraham mourning and saying this is just a part of worship or something like that, because that's a very critical angle if that was what was happening. And he makes that argument fairly convincingly. So I feel like if I wasn't in the word as much, maybe I would fall for it. He does this again on page 119, where he says Paul's writing as a pastor, and that's so incredibly true, but he says Paul's intent wasn't theology. And I would say that's taking it too far to make your point. He was making a point, which was really good. He said like, Paul thought in Hebrew and wrote in Greek. I would agree with that. That's a great point, great quote. But it's not that Paul wasn't writing theology. Like as a pastor, it's very clear that Paul was writing theological arguments for all of their issues and giving them grounded theology so that they knew therefore how to live. I just feel like that fell flat for me. He can make his point without going so far where he's kind of misusing or adding or taking away from the scriptures. And this is just a common theme. Those are some of the two biggest examples where I was like, you know, this is, come on. But there's some other times where he kind of goes in this direction and I understand passion. I love passion. I love to see a passionate author, but he goes a little bit too far on it at times where he's just not faithful to the scriptures. Some good quotes that I wrote down is on page 54, he says, Hesed does not come from covenant. Covenant comes from Hesed. And then on page 113, he says, Hesed is in eight of the 13 parables Jesus told. Really cool stuff. So it's a great book. It's just at times his passion kind of leads him into messy waters. And I'm so grateful Amy Overton recommended this because it's a great read to see Hesed not just in the Old Testament, but also through the New Testament. However, because the New Testament isn't written with Hebrew, it's just hard. They're using a completely different language. So you can't say for sure they were picturing Hesed when they said mercy or when they said love. And yet Michael does argue for that. Whenever there's themes of merciful graciousness, he argues, well, that's for sure Hesed. And I'm like, uh, I, I think we need to be a little bit more like, 
it probably is, but you know, a little less confident maybe. Nonetheless, I would still recommend this to anybody that enjoys the topic of Hesed. And I think it's a really, really powerful book for thinking and wrestling with the love of God and how that's true to his entire character through the Old Testament and into the New. I'm excited to finish it. I will probably finish it. If I just sit down for an hour uninterrupted, I definitely would finish it. I probably have like 30 minutes left of reading. Let's see. Oh, wow. Maybe less than that. Look at all. All of this is just notes. Oh, no. Watch me have like a chapter left. Appendix A. Conclusion. <gasps> so, yeah. Oh, no. I've got 36. I have like 10 more pages. Okay, let's read it really quick on camera. I've got chapter 19. We'll finish it and I'll give you my final review. I would recommend this. This is definitely like a four star read. I definitely wouldn't recommend this without saying there are a couple things that I think he takes too far and then kind of going into detail on that. And so that is why I wrote it on the inside of my book. I tend to do that whenever there's big things inside of the book that I do not want to recommend, but four star read. So we had King's Cross, which is a five star read. Another gospel, which I can't remember what I rated, like five stars. Mama Bear Apologetics maybe would be like a three star because it just wasn't for me, but it's a good read that I would totally recommend to other people. And then this is like a four star. So this was a great video all in all. And I really appreciate you guys and your amazing recommendations. And if you wanna see some more books I've read this summer and some ones that you definitely need to check out, click this video here and we can read together. I'll see y'all there.